this is Gracie Bradenton. I'm Coach Dom. This is Khalil. Uh, we're um, we're going to be showing you a variation of side control today called Kesa Gatami. And um, it's a lot of times a position that are confused with some other positions. So I'm just going to go through exactly what I'm talking about real quick if you want to lay this way. So everybody knows normal side control here. This is a situation where I switched my hips to face Khalil's head, right? And uh, instead of having an underhook here, like I would normally have in the position that we normally refer to as 100 kilos, this is a little bit different in that I've moved my arm in front and collected his head, and I'm now sitting in what we refer to as wrestler side control. Typically, um, typically people in jiu-jitsu call this um, case of Gatami, but if you don't want to use that word, wrestler side control and case of Gatami are pretty much interchangeable. So um, any way you want to refer to it, those are the same positions. Um, what I'm doing here to make sure that Khalil is uh, pinned is I'm going to be picking my butt up off the floor, making a wide base. That way, if Khalil were to try to pull me over to his left, it would be hard to do that because my weight is distributed so far over here. And furthermore, I can compromise his head and uh, how comfortable he is with this, uh, with this pulling up um, that I'm doing. And you can also, if alternatively, just grab the inside of your thigh here, and that should keep his head pretty much secure as I drive my weight down into his diaphragm. Now, the number one thing that's going to be attacked here, I'll turn a little so you guys can see, is this arm that's in front of me. The, the nightmare scenario for Khalil is I push his arm down between my legs and get my leg over here because what's going to happen here is he's going to get Americana and uh, his, his elbow or his shoulder or maybe both will just explode basically. It's going to be horrible. So he doesn't want that. So the first thing I want to show you guys is how to escape this position if they've already isolated your arm and they're starting to Americana you. And it's actually gonna be an identical escape, almost, uh, to one that we've covered before, which is the hitchhiker. So kind of similar to when you hitchhike out of an arm bar, his arm is bent here, just like if you were to hitchhike in a normal arm bar position. When I start to push his arm into position to try to break the shoulder and the, uh, and the elbow and get my leg over here, Khalil is gonna circle his hips outside and he's going to hitchhike out. He just needs to clear his head under my arm, and I have to let him go because now he's on my leg, and he can start working some kind of takedown or whatever it is he's going to do to improve the position. Really, any any positional improvement is better than where he just went. So, um, right here, one more time. I've collected his arm. He knows what's up. He's savvy, so he knows as soon as I push this arm, he has one chance. He's got to start hitchhiking, and now I have to probably abandon that move and start wrestling. Now, what happens if he hasn't yet acquired your arm and you still have, uh, typically what people will choose to do is body lock at that point. So I have Khalil here. I haven't collected this arm yet. Instead, he's body locked around me. And uh, to do this escape, this second escape, um, you're going to have to make sure you have good placement here because if his grip is really high up under my armpit, it's going to be hard probably to complete this. I, I can very easily resist that grip. But if he reaches down under my floating ribs here and squeezes tight, now when he goes to bridge, I'm probably going to have to comply. So what Khalil's going to do is first, it's two separate movements. It's bridging directly back over his head, and then he's going to bridge to his left, which makes it extremely easy for me to, to move even though I'm pinning him. What he shouldn't do is try to just go diagonally. Because if he tries to do that, the likelihood is he's not going to be able to get me over. He has to go over his head directly behind him first, and then when my hip's off the floor, he'll be able to change the position. And now he's out, he's on top. So no matter what's happening in that position, you have an avenue out. It's just gonna depend on whether or not he's already isolated that arm. Because if that arm is isolated in the beginning, the second escape is not going to work, but the first one will. If you don't, if he doesn't have your arm yet, you can do the second escape, but you won't be able to hitchhike. So it's going to depend what's happening with that arm there. But uh, even though this position I know for beginners is tough to get out of, and you're going to feel like this is hopeless, this is horrible, I don't want to be here, don't worry. Uh, you just have to work it a little bit with those escapes, and you'll find that it's pretty easy to escape. And uh, like and subscribe. Ding dong, hit the bell, and we'll see you guys next time.